You may well know that Intel is the world's largest chip maker, but what you may not know is the company's chips aren't just used in computers. That's because Intel has jumped headfirst into a market known as embedded processors, claiming it represents a $10 billion opportunity. The technology already surrounds us. Anytime you go to the hospital or the gym or even the supermarket, you're using machines embedded with components like chips and processors. Joining us now to discuss Intel's push into embedded technology is Tan Steenman, Vice President of Intel's Architecture Group. Thanks so much for joining us here. Um, Great to be here, Emily. So it's interesting markets, treadmills, digital signs, footwear. Why does Intel want to get into those kinds of markets? Now, all of those applications, consumers are really looking for next generation great experiences. And what you see in general embedded and computing devices nowadays, even your iPhone, is really setting a new standard on what consumers would like to see in embedded devices as well. You know, and embedded is kind of a, a strange term that we use in the technology industry all the time. But it's really about the computing that surrounds you everywhere. And now, Paul Ottolini has said this is a key growth area, but aren't the margins more narrow and aren't these chips ultimately less profitable than regular chips that go into PCs? Oh, no, quite to the contrary. We have a tremendous business in our core and Xeon processors. As an example, we, did a, we do a tremendous amount of business with a company like Ericsson that connects all your phone calls every day, makes sure that you get your text messages. They have realized a 70% gain in efficiency on their networks. Uh, particularly in operational expenditures by using Intel technology. So how do you attract analysts and investors to a business that's harder to understand than the traditional bread and butter PC business that Intel is involved in? Yeah, you know, Emily, it's really the growth. It's the growth that we see in that market. Traditionally, over the last, like, uh, 10 years or so, we have grown this business at a pace of about 18%. Uh, but we have really started to accelerate that growth. In about the 2007 time frame, there was a significant transition in this market about these great applications that are becoming so interactive. Uh, for instance, uh, the Adidas wall. We've worked with Adidas. Adidas, as you might know, sells like 10,000 products. But how do you put like 10,000 products in a store, Emily? That is almost like impossible to do. They would become like gigantic stores. So we work with Adidas on how do you solve that business problem? And how do you give people access to 10,000 products? We have done that through a virtual capability. We build a virtual wall with them. Consumers have access to all of their different products through this virtual wall. And it gives Adidas the opportunity to interact much more directly with customers. And it gives them great marketing data on where their products are used. So how does this work in terms of innovation? Are you guys constantly brainstorming? Where can we put chips that they aren't already? No, we really work very closely with all of our industry partners uh, across a wide variety of industries. For instance, the healthcare industry um, in many areas. For instance, China. I understand that you spent a lot of time in your China. I did. In China. I just spent the last year in Hong Kong and did a lot of work in China. There's a lot of a big emerging trend of mobile clinics and rural clinics in China. Our chips and the capabilities they have in compute performance and power consumption have enabled all kinds of different mobile uh, medical equipment like so, ultrasound scanners. So in the future, where are we going to see chips that we don't right now? How are our chips going to change our lives? You know, they're going to change your lives in very profound ways because you will truly see them all around you. Uh, the work that we have done with MyaFit, uh, for instance, in healthcare and preventative uh, healthcare and training and exercise equipment, it gives uh, consumers this great experience when they work out. And everybody knows that trainers, personal trainers, can be pretty expensive. And these virtual environments gives them the opportunity to interact with treadmill devices and do exercises. MyaFit has integrated some great technology in motion detection and things like that to make sure that you do your workouts correctly, you don't get injured, but it's a very motivating experience for you. Oh, it'd be great if I can get the chips to do the work for me. Tom Steenman of Intel, thanks so much for joining us here. Thank you, Emily. On Bloomberg <laughs> West.